Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Take these just off for a moment. Lovely to see you all this morning. A very warm welcome to you all as we gather for our celebration today is the Feast of Christ the King. It's the last Sunday before Advent, so the colour changes from the kingdom season of red. We enter the party season of Christ the King. I always say to people with children in school when explaining the colours, red is a very serious colour because, of course, it's the colour of blood and we think about the kingdom, we think about those uh, saints who were martyred and all that sort of thing. Then we think about purple as being the great thinking colour, Advent and Lent, the times that we think. Green, well, green, so I said, what's green about it? It's the ordinary colour, but to me, it's, there's nothing ordinary about it. Then we come to white. I said, that's the church's party colour. That's christenings, weddings, that's Christmas, that's Easter. That's when we really celebrate. And we have something worth celebrating today. We come to this beginning of our run towards Christmas for Advent and all that brings. But today we celebrate the fact that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the King of Heaven. Jesus is the King of our lives. And there's a lovely children's song about that. If we could sing, I'd teach it to you. But it involves actions as well. I'd love to see you do that, but I'll <laughs> save that for another time. But Christ the King, uh, it's a wonderful feast. It's a wonderful celebration that we join together in today here in St. Tylo's Bishopston. And Dave is recording the service and we'll be broadcasting it later for those who view our YouTube channel. And it's interesting, as we've um, developed this ministry, so uh, up to, I think on, on, on most occasions, between 50 and 60 uh, people watch the service at home at some time during the week. At Easter time, we had over 100 people watching it. And so this, these services are important. From next Sunday, God willing and technology providing, we'll actually be at 10 o'clock live streaming on the internet as well. And that will be going out live to those who will connect to the service. And that's a, an additional ministry for our church, that we are able to both broadcast and live stream our worship to those at home and beyond our parish, actually, as well, can share in the worship that we enjoy here in church. Today you've got a copy of the bulletin. Thanks to Stuart for producing those. You've also got your track and trace sheets and you've got your order of service. Just to say a couple of things. Everything that you've got, apart from the track and trace sheet, which I ask you to leave on the RPU to be collected afterwards. We have to fill one of those in every time, I'm afraid. Leave behind. The order of service and the bulletin, please take with you. They're a one-off thing. They are disposable. We have to take, you have to take them away because you are the one who's used them. Again, the same rules apply. As you come up for communion, Mike will guide you up this morning. Do sanitise your hands before you receive. Do sanitise your hands after you receive. If you think Nigel looks a bit strange this morning, well, we all look a bit strange at the moment. Nigel will be wearing his mask as well as the visor to administer communion to you. He will have to drop the communion wafer into your hand because we're not allowed to touch hands. It's all these regulations, which in a way have become the abnormal reality. But if we have to do these things to make ourselves safe and keep ourselves in one piece, then amen to that. So that is where we are and that is what we continue to do at this present time. But still worship. It's still our time with God our Father. So we will hold silence for a moment. Now I'm going to invite Sue to come and lead the first part of our worship here this morning. Thank you. So we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. So we take a moment to call to mind our particular sins. We say together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The collect for today. It's uh, on your service sheet, so can we say all together behind our masks? Well, apart from me. <laughs> Eternal Lord, Father, Father, your, your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of the sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd and I the Lord will be their God and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to say our psalm together this morning, which is also on your sheets. The response to the psalm is, Come, let us worship and bow down. Come, let us worship and bow down. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down. 
In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Come, let us worship and bow down. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Alleluia. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Would you like to stand for the gospel? Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and, in, and visited you? And the king will answer him, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. May my words and all our hearts be open to the guidance of the Lord's Spirit this day. Amen. Please be seated. Now, some of you at this, may be at this present time watching on Netflix The Crown. The dramatization of our royal family and for all its ups and downs, it's, I have to say, it's very well made. I think this particular season is focusing on the sort of events of the 1980s um, and the relationship between Princess Diana and Prince Charles. It's been very good so far and it's interesting to look back on these things and remember what you were doing at that particular time in your life. And back last season, of course, there was the investiture at... Uh, Carnarvon Castle. And I do remember that was the year I was working towards my GCSEs and all the things that were going on. I think Concord flew the same year. And I remember as a young lad being taken down to, you know, I'm sure if you, as you go out to the east side of Swansea, you've seen the derelict Cape Horner pub and standing there waiting 
for Prince Charles to come in his flash car down the uh, Fabian Way into Swansea. And we waited what seemed like an ages for this new Prince of Wales to arrive and drive past us. We waited for ages and then he was gone. Another occasion, uh, more recently, was when I was vicar in Reda, and as chair of the YMCA, we were told that Prince Charles, as part of one of his annual tours of the Principality, was coming to Reda to see the work of the YMCA. Um, but that all those who would be uh, greet, meet, being met or being you know, introduced to him would have to be vetted first, uh, and so they did, had to come and vet me. <laughs> Sounds terrible, doesn't it? And. Um, they had to, then we had, on this particular day, about two days before his arrival, we had these very shady-looking big guys uh, with bulges under their jackets arrive at our house to say they wanted to know how many people were in the house and could they have a look at the view from the bedroom windows. <laughs> and so upstairs they trotted into our bedroom windows because then it suddenly dawned on us our bedroom windows overlooked the area in front of the YMCA where the prince would get out of the car and the prince would enter the YMCA and greet people and, and he would go. And it was a, if anybody wanted to take a pot shot at him, that was the place. It was the vicarage windows was the place to do it from. So they wanted a list of who would be in the vicarage that day and they also wanted a list of names and contacts. It's a bit like track and trace, isn't it? Um, and who would be in the house whilst the vicar would be standing in the line waiting to shake hands with the Prince of Wales if the vicar actually passed the security checks that they were running on him. The vicar did, and uh, what did surprise me was he's not that tall. I'm five foot six, he's only five foot nine. And so it wasn't a case of, sir, it was a case of almost looking the gentleman straight in the eye. And again, it was one of those occasions where you seem to be standing in line for ages to meet the, the future king, and eventually he did turn up. The reason why I share those stories with you, it is about, almost like today, beginning the sense of preparation for the coming king in Advent. We know that Jesus is Lord, we know that Jesus is King, and yet we are waiting. Well, you say, well, he's still come. He is come. He came in Israel. He came as the shepherd. He came as the one who was not recognized 2,000 years ago. And in that sense, we continue to wait today. We know that one day Prince Charles will possibly be the King of England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, and head of the Commonwealth, however you wish to describe that. And eventually he will become the monarch, but he is that monarch in waiting. But it will happen. In a sense, Jesus is Lord, he is King, he is part of the Holy Trinity. That has already happened, it's been foretold, and one day it will be fulfilled properly, as it says in Scripture. And God and heaven, well, God will be with his people and heaven and earth will be as one. But the language used to describe the coming king in our readings today is very much one of anticipation. An anticipation that was fulfilled, an anticipation that will be fulfilled in the future. Ezekiel tells us that Christ the Messiah will come as the great shepherd of his flock. And that is very controversial. In fact, it's quite startling. Because what do we all sing at Christmas? You know, while shepherds watch their flocks by night or seated on the ground. It is a very controversial tale if you're a Jew. Because not only do you suddenly are confronted with this idea of angels and shepherds and seated on the ground, wherever that might have been. But you are confronted with the very sense that shepherds are the lowest of the low. That wasn't the top rank job in first century Jerusalem. The shepherds were the ones that you kept in the hills because they weren't the ones you wanted in the city with you. They were the people, the slightly sort of dodgy characters who were good at looking after the sheep but didn't have too many social skills. So to suddenly find that these are the ones chosen to announce uh, the king has arrived, the one whom the shepherds appear, the angels appear to, to say that the king is here is scandalous. So for Ezekiel to talk about the Messiah as the coming, you know, as a shepherd, that's, you're starting to get on dodgy ground. Prophets were not always liked and honoured 
But for a prophet to talk about the Messiah as a shepherd as well, now you really are getting scandalous. And so here we have this idea that the Messiah, the coming king, would be a servant in the lowest forms, a shepherd, is quite, outstanding, quite amazing. So it's, it's worth thinking about that today at the, feast, at the Feast of Christ the King. Christ the King elevated, but Christ the King humble, the servant, the shepherd. And then look at the Gospel reading. What's that telling us? That's telling us that we sometimes get our priorities wrong. We get our, king, we get our ideas of kingship and authority and we place it up there somewhere. Like the crowds reach, uh, waiting to watch a young prince go by in his car. Waiting for hours for the glimpse of the king, the future king, as he goes by. This idea of kingship and leadership is not about being elevated above others. The kingship, the leadership that our king, Jesus, brings is one of humility and of service. We can dress it up in fine language. We can dress it up in the panoply of church. But ultimately we are talking about a Messiah who reverses the roles, who shows us the way to live. And this reading from the Gospel today is a stark reminder to us of the Ezekiel prophecy. That the Messiah comes as a shepherd. That the Messiah comes as the scandalous one. The one to whom the angels will bring the good news first. The ones who would go into the streets of Bethlehem and shout and dance and sing. And people would be worried because here comes the dodgy people again. A bit like when you see Christians turning up at a party. You think, here comes the God squad. <laughs> the shepherds, it was slightly different. But these readings from the Gospel today show us how we, as Christians, are meant to respond. We have the King of Glory. <clears throat> we have the King of Kings. We celebrate that and we anticipate His coming again. And yet in the meantime, we are asked to be those shepherds. We are asked not to turn our back on people. We are asked not to disregard the low, the humble. We are asked to do what Christ would do. And it's hard, isn't it? Because sometimes we go through life with our, with our eyes set, so focused on all the busyness that crowds in on us. And yet, here are the scriptures that are asking us to stop and be shepherds. To mind out for those who cannot mind for themselves who cannot help themselves and who perhaps do not know the love and the blessing of God in their lives. Throughout Advent, our food banks will be working overtime trying to provide a Christmas for those who cannot provide for themselves. Throughout Advent, as we prepare for Christmas with all its glitter and glitz, there are those for whom this is a dreaded season. And yet behind it lies fresh start, a coming king, but a king who is a servant, a king who is a child, a king whom the undesirables proclaim out loud. That makes me an undesirable as a shepherd, as one who announces the good news, then I am prepared to be that. For I think all of us need to remember who we are all of us need to remember who it is we proclaim. And we do it with humble hearts. And we do it with joy. Because it is good news. It is good news for the world. It is good news for those around us. Who I think this Christmas need that good news more than ever. So let us be those people who proclaim the coming of the King. Let us be those who do not turn our backs and ignore others at this Feast of Christ the King at this coming Advent and the Christmas to come. Amen.
We're going to join together now in the words of our creed, which we will obviously say together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, as we today celebrate this feast of Christ the King, we anticipate your coming, and we anticipate a season of prayer and reflection as we think on our lives and the lives of those around us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we reflect on our own lives, help us to indeed be the embodiment of all Christ stands for, to be humble to be a servant, to think of others before ourselves, to look for those who life, who life has overlooked, to be there for those in need, to raise up the lowly, to elevate those whose lives are in a mess, to reach out and help where we can so that we indeed may fulfill all that Christ has asked of us. Lord, hear us. We thank you, Lord, that we may gather this day here in this place, in this holy place, on this holy ground. May we, your holy people, set our hearts and minds on holy things, that we may walk the way of Christ this Advent and daily offer our prayers to him. May we indeed every day seek to do something to help those around us. May we indeed look to be true bringers of the kingdom of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And as we as a nation struggle still with COVID-19, with infection, with death rate, with rules and regulations, separated from family members. May we be strong. May we indeed show our love for others at a distance, even if we can't be with them. May we do all that is asked of us, in the small ways and the big ways. And may we pray this coming Christmas, we may once more celebrate with those that we cannot see at this time, loved ones far and near. Lord, hear us. Lord, Let us commend to God the work this day and this coming Advent season of faith in families, of our food banks, 
of all of those organisations that reach out at this time and help those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Just pray for those who are sick. We hold in silence for a moment those known to us and those whose names we've been asked to pray for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Remember before God those who have died, those known to us, those unknown to us, and those whose anniversary of their passing falls at this time. Lord, hear us. And let us celebrate all that is good, all that God has done for us, by his Son, Jesus Christ, who has taken our sins and given us the way to eternal life, by the sending of the Holy Spirit that lives within us and strengthens us and gives our lives resolve and purpose, and gives us courage to face the week and the year and the years ahead. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as you know, we can't all go around hugging each other in the peace. I'm sure some will be very happy about that. <laughs> but we can... Wish God's peace on each other by waving at them. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. I'm missing some wafers, Mike.
Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave Jesus your Son to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light, with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Crowds came out to see your son. Yet at the end, they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to the table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. We stand in the mouth. Jesus thanked your Father for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it to it, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. The Son in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. The the Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing, honour, glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world.
Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please join with me in the prayer after communion. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, we declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. May we who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give life to the world. Give us firm and hope you have set before us. So we and the Lord of children shall be free. On the whole earth live to your praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our King make you faithful and strong to do his will that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you 